Jamar is a damn fool, I'm telling you. He don't even remember who the fuck JoJo is. So that just goes to show you, motherfuckers, like, let me just get to this damn review. <laughs> You guys, it's me, your boy Scotty, and you're watching my review of Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 2, Episode 2. I'm up in this bitch. I look rough as fuck. I ain't got no haircut. Been to work all motherfucking day, but I'm here, right? I'm here, I'm here, and I ain't going nowhere till I'm tired of doing this shit, okay? So, we in this bitch. So, we're going to get on and get on to the get on. You know, we ain't even going to start doing all this extra shit. we just going to get on into the review. So, Turd Daddy. I never even knew that Turd Daddy had a son, let alone a son that's in college right now. So Turd Daddy and his son is doing the damn thing. You know, he's a scholar. He's doing it. Gunplay walks in and the next thing you know, Gunplay said he got a teenage son too that's also a scholar. And I'm trying to figure out how the fuck old is Gunplay because I know that Turd Daddy is in his 40s. So how the fuck old is Gunplay and when did he have his son? Did he have his son early on? You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm trying to figure out, but nonetheless, it's good to see that their kids are doing well in school. That's all that really matters at this point. And you know, I always drill it into my younger brother's head. He's in college now, and I always drill it in his head to do much better than I ever did because I flunked the fuck out. My mind was focused on some other shit, and I flunked the fuck out and never returned. And that was like nine years ago. It makes nine years this year. So, you know, I don't want him to ever make the same mistakes that I made. But, um, Turd Daddy talks about Trina and the, the, and the debacle that happened to take it to the house thing. Now, now, my thing about it is, although I don't want a damn TNT project, that's just my personal opinion, I don't want a TNT um, project, but at the end of the day, it seems like Trina really wanted it, and if Trick really didn't want to be a part of the shit, he should have never signed on to do it. And that's just being real, he never should have signed on to do it if he didn't want to do it. Point the fuck blank. It ain't nothing else to be said about that. And, you know, um, the way that he pulled the mic off Trina and all of that stuff, talking about some diva shit, looks to me like you're the one being a diva. And, you know, I'd rather hear a, a solo Trina album anyway at this point. Like, I don't really care to hear from Trick Daddy right now. If he ain't singing I'm a Thug, if he ain't singing America, if he ain't singing Now nah, Nigga, if he ain't singing Take It To The House, if he ain't singing, um... Thug Holiday, I don't want to hear nothing from Trick Daddy. I'm just saying, I want to hear the old shit. I don't even give a fuck about nothing new. So then they talk about Kiara and how she's moved out. And you know, Trick was saying when he was happily married, he really was happy because when he was with Joy, that really kept him out of the streets. And Gunplay could, you know, relate to what he was saying because the same thing happened with, um... Kiara, you know what I mean? It, she kept him out of the street. She kept him from being the same person that he used to be. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So, um, spectacular. He meets up with Fizz and Ray J. And, you know, it's mighty funny that they're, the three of them are meeting up with each other because... Well, I know Ray J isn't a part of this tour, but I know Spectacular and Lil Fizz is doing that whole Millennials tour and it's going to be B2K and Pretty Ricky and all of that stuff. A tour that I won't be attending, but you know, I know my friends are. Um, Spectacular has been having, um, you know, he, he's, he's engaged now to this girl named Jamie. He's happy, but what he's not happy about is his family dynamic and he feels like a lot of his family dynamic had a lot to do with Pretty Ricky breaking up. And his father was the manager. And at this point, him and his father don't have a relationship. And all he really wants is for him and his father to be at a steady pace. Be at a better place. Be able to talk to each other. Because you only get one damn father. And, you know, his father from the streets, he ain't really trying to be with the sensitive shit. So that's just what he got right now. So at this point... I'm rooting for Spectacular and his father to make amends because me and my dad made amends 
like about five or six years ago and I'm very happy about that. So at this point in time, you know, just put everything aside and just talk to your dad about what's going on and hopefully things will work out. So Jojo, she pulls up while Bobby is doing his rehearsal and Prince is there with him. So this angry bird walks in and she's saying that, you know, Tip called her out saying that she was being fake towards, you know, Prince and Bobby. And honestly, I really believe that, you know, Tweety Bird has been a, a bit messy. Like, all she's doing, even on the first episode, all she was doing was sitting around running her fucking mouth and gossiping with the mayor about everybody and everybody else's business. That's what the fuck she was doing. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, um, Joe, you know, Prince got upset because, you know, he's known JoJo for like 10 years and he's always felt like they were friends. But JoJo put it out there that they were never friends. Shay. And he just went the fuck off on her. Like, and she told me something. Don't get up in my face. Don't get up in my face. And only for her to walk up in his face and then push him. And I'm like, girl, he was never in your motherfucking face. He never got near you. So why the fuck is you talking about step out of my face? Step out of my face. He was never in your motherfucking face, bitch. Like, what are you talking about? Go and fly south for the winter, bitch. That's where birds fly. You are a bird, so do that. Okay, bitch? Like, he didn't even get up in your face. He was, like, this far back from you. And that's why he acted an extra-ass fool and took his shirt off and ran behind the dumpster now. I don't know why he did that. But you pissed him off that much that he did some dumb-ass bullshit like that. He took his whole shirt off, ran out the room, and ran behind the dumpster. Princess, I don't know what the fuck your problem is, but, boy, you need to find something better to do. But JoJo was... Completely wrong in that whole little situation. Point the fuck blank. So we meet Chaotic. I've never heard of him before. So apparently he's a Miami-based rapper. Never heard of him before. But my thing about it is Chaotic look like he mow grass all day and drink old English all motherfucking day while he mowing your grass. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of nigga he give me. But... I do see that he's a very humble guy. He comes from a humble beginning. And you know he got his sisters on the show. You know, it look like they living a regular life. And I love it when Love and Hip Hop shows us people that's just living like regular people. Instead of these motherfuckers renting these houses and getting evicted. And they ain't really, you know, living like they want to portray that they're living. Like, just show me that you living like me, nigga. Like, just do that. Like, just show me that you living in a damn... Three bedroom, two bath house, you know what I mean? With a living room, dining room split with a kitchen, a garage and a laundry room. Just do that and then, you know, we'll be cool. But, you know, people on these shows don't never want to show that shit. But I appreciate it. And he comes from a hard background. He got shot 17 times. He didn't have a father in his life. And with his brother going to jail for 30 years, that made him look at some more shit and just come out and be a better person and try to do something else with his life instead of being in that street shit. So... I commend him for that, and I already like him already. Despite the fact that he look like he cut grass and drink old English all day, along with eating cheese rings all day, I I, I can vibe with um chaotic. You know what I mean? But Miami Tip want to introduce him to Joy. Now I don't know what the fuck Tip thinking about, but I don't see that happening at this point. You know what I mean? I just don't see it. So JoJo sits with Amara, and she says that you know her and Bobby. Her and JoJo got into it. No, her and Prince got into it. And it's because of Bobby's messy ways. But my thing about it is it looks to me like you're the bitch that's being messy, JoJo, because you're sitting up here with the same bitch, Amara. And I believe I'm probably the only one that don't really care for her, but that's another video for another day because I don't really care for Amara like that. And I wasn't mad at Geisha. Shout out to Geisha, one fan. Y'all know who Geisha is. She's from Miami. She's a rapper from Miami. She knows all the tea about these bitches in Miami. So shout out to... Geisha, one fan, um, whatever. And, um, you know, she telling her all this shit about Prince and Bobby or whatever, and she want to call Bobby the messiest person in Miami, but that's supposed to be your best friend. Obviously, you just as messy as he is if he's so fucking messy, bitch, but looks to me like you're the messy one because you running around telling everybody business. And then you come up to Amara and you tell her about what the fuck Jesse Wooden said. Now, you say that you feel like Jesse Wu is cool, but Amara really don't know what the fuck Jesse Wu problem is with her. But JoJo says she gonna set up a meeting for them to talk. So, we gonna see how the fuck that shit goes. So, Jesse Wu and Tip. Tip got a podcast. Never knew she did, but she got a podcast. And, um, you know, after they're done with the podcast, you know, Jesse Wu tells Tip what her issue is with the mayor. Now, apparently, her little sister talk show was supposed to be a bigger thing than what it is. But Amara took her 
idea and made her own show. I think it's an internet-based show. I never heard about it. All I know is that America got one single out called Insecure, and this bitch think that she's motherfucking Janelle Monet. But that's neither here nor there. But you know, she mad about she mad at her about stealing her idea, but also trying to steal her man. You know what I mean? And she feels like she needs to talk to Amira about that. And JoJo then set a meeting up with um, her and Amira. And Tip is not here for JoJo. And JoJo ain't here for Tip. So I already know this is going to be some beef shit for the rest of the season. All right? So, so Spectacular gets his family together. And he wants to get the family dynamic back together. Like I never knew that him and Baby Blue were brothers. I never knew that. And you know everybody feels like ever since he left and moved off to Hollywood things have changed and it's not the same anymore. And you know his mama want to blame Jamie for it. And my thing about it is okay so you that, so you that type of bitch now. You want to blame Jamie because your son decided that he wanted to move on and, and do some other shit and move on and move to another city or whatever. He's a grown ass man. Like, why are you blaming her? If anything, you need to blame your son for moving away and not telling you about it. That's who the fuck you need to blame. But instead, being a typical mother, being them type of meddling ass mothers, you want to blame her for it. So... Spectacular tells Baby Blue that he wants to get everybody together from Pretty Rico so they can have a conversation about their issues. Now, Baby Blue really don't care about it at this point, and I don't think Spectacular really cares either because Spectacular really don't need this damn group. You know what I'm saying? He he's he's already a billionaire without Pretty Rico. He moved on and did some other business ventures and became a millionaire without being in a singing group. However, he this is his passion. He loves doing it, and you know Slicker might need the motherfucking money. Pleasure P um, might need it too because he ain't doing shit either. He ain't putting out no solo album since the introduction of Marcus Cooper. I think that was the name of the album. He had Boyfriend Number 2, Did You Wrong, and Under. He was nominated for a Grammy for it too. So that's the last album I heard him have and that was 10 years ago. This year make 10 years. So what the fuck you doing Pleasure? You better get to the music. So um, we're here at Chaotic's performance and Bobby and Prince have this awkward energy and Joy sees it. So Joy was like, what's going on between y'all? And Prince was like, I'm just disappointed in Bobby. And Bobby gives his side of the story. And you know, um, he said, you know, you went the fuck off on me and you went the fuck off on JoJo. So Prince was like, well, you know why I went off on JoJo. And um, Bobby was like, why? Because she put her hands on me. Rightfully so. JoJo did put her hands on Prince for no reason. He wasn't doing nothing to her. He wasn't threatening her. He wasn't in her personal space. He, she got in his personal space and she put her hands on him for no reason. Like she was being real extra for no apparent reason. No reason, period. No reason. But she decided that she wanted to do all that extra shit and just be extra. Put her hands on him and all of that stuff. Like, I keep telling y'all women on reality shows. Keep putting y'all hands on these niggas. These niggas gonna forget that y'all some damn bitches and put their hands on you and knock your ass out like a nigga. Keep on, though. Keep on. So then, you know, Tip introduces Joy to Bobby and Prince. But he was like, he was like, I already met Prince and you got me meeting Bobby. But you know who I'm trying to meet. This nigga really ready to meet Joy. Joy ain't impressed by Chaotic's ass at all, okay? He's not with it. She's not with it at all. She is not impressed. She done went through the rapper shit before. She don't give a fuck. I'm just tripping the fuck out. But then, you know, Prince said that he can rap. Now, Prince that said that he can rap. And I ain't never heard of him rapping. The only thing I ever heard of him doing was being a club promoter. That's all I ever heard. I have never heard of him rapping, period. And Chaotic is laughing his ass off because he do not believe it. Now, Chaotic just might be what Plows could have been for this show. So, since we ain't got Plows, I keep Chaotic. I keep him. He grown on me. I like him. So, it's time for the Pretty Ricky confrontation. Spectacular finally got all his guys together so they can discuss and dissect whatever is going on. Pleasure ain't with the shit. He don't want to fuck with Baby Blue because he feel like it's his fault. And whatever happened, I'm going to always blame Baby Blue for it. Why? Because it's always his motherfucker fault. He always doing some fuck shit. He always angry. He always look menacing. Like, he got this look on his face. He always fucking angry. I really believe he's a Leo or a Scorpio. Get ready for my astrology. Um, My astrology segment is coming out next week. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so, I just don't like Baby Blue, 
And that's just what it is. And Pleasure was trying to tell his truth about the situation. Baby Blue won't let him talk. Pleasure was ready to go. Ready to steal off on Baby Blue. And that was just going to be the end of it. He just wasn't ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Baby Blue just get on my nerves. So, Spectacular went out there. And he talked to Pleasure about what was going on between him and Baby Blue. And, you know, from the looks of the Spectacular has the the best head. He's the most level-headed one out of Pretty Ricky. You never would have thought he was the most level-headed one with him grinding and doing this whole grind contest a couple of years back on YouTube and all that shit. You never would have known he was the one that had the best mind. And Pleasure said, you don't need Pretty Ricky. I don't need Pretty Ricky. So that's basically shade to the other two. Basically, y'all two don't need Pretty Ricky, but the other two do. You know what I'm saying? That's practically what it was. So when they came back to the table... You know, pleasure people's come. So, spectacular trying to talk, but Baby Blue keep cutting them off. Baby Blue ain't got no respect for no motherfucking body. Point blank, he ain't got no fucking respect for nobody. He always saying something. He always speaking his mind. He just need to shut the fuck up. He got that short man syndrome. He just got to be heard. I need you to shut the fuck up. Because you was the one that I did, that I liked the least back in the gap when Pretty Ricky was a thing. So, just shut the fuck up. Y'all ain't gonna never get past shit if you don't ever shut your fucking mouth and let somebody else out. Point blank, I already know you always the problem. You always the problem, baby blue. Always the fucking problem. Always the problem. Always the problem. You gonna remain always the problem. Katrina, number one, don't nobody wanna hear no TNT project. I'm not even that type of person that likes to downgrade, you know, veteran artists when they put out music. I'm I'm actually the one that's that's an advocate for nostalgia. I really am. But Nobody wants to hear no TNT project. We barely want to hear yours solo. So just focus on your own crap and keep it moving. But Trick, he wrong on so many motherfucking levels. Just due to the fact that if you knew you really didn't want to do this shit, why bother? If you knew you didn't want to do this shit, why fuck with Trina? Why get her hopes up? Why waste her fucking time? Her album's supposed to be out like... Almost a year and a half ago. She she too busy waiting on you. You fucking up her motherfucking money. So at this point, you just need to just like like Trina said, you can be the trick and the Trina. I'm done with it. And that's and just and that's just what it is, Trina. Be done with it. Cause he ain't about shit. So time for the get down. Jesse Wood and met up with Amara and JoJo. Now Amara apologized to JoJo. I mean, uh apologized to Jesse Wu. For making her uncomfortable or just coming across inappropriate. But to me, Jesse already had a little bit of hostility. And I went from loving Jesse already to like looking at her sideways like, okay, you called Amira out for doing some snaky shit. She apologized to you. What the fuck else do you want, bitch? Seriously. Like, all of this about some old ass shit like this shit old as fuck and you in an uproar about it. I believe Mona must have said, must have told you, bitch, you better turn up if you want you some screen time. You better turn the fuck up because, baby, I don't understand what this beef is about. Like me and Bounty Blue was conversing on Twitter and she said, am I the only one that's confused about this Jesse Wu and, and Amara beef? And I'm like, bitch, shit, no, you're not the only one. Because I don't know what the fuck going on. I don't know what the fuck I need to read for. And JoJo thought, why you throw a drink and run away? I hate it when y'all do that. Y'all love to throw a drink and run the other direction. JoJo throws a drink. No, and then Jesse Wu throws a drink at JoJo. Then she turns around and throws a bottle at Amara. And I'm like, what? So many questions that need so many motherfucking answers. But this is my review on Love and Hip Hop Miami. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And share this video on any platform you feel. Follow me on all social media. All of my social media is at the bottom. And that's it, you guys, to my marriage boot camp. Love and Hip Hop All-Stars review tomorrow. I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.